year the boys are back in town boys are back in town thank you guys for listening to another episode of the adult hub podcast if you're here that means you mess with us and you're having a good time this is episode 18 here we discuss uh travel etiquette on a vacation uh proposal etiquette we touch on a lot of things man that's what the podcast that's what we do here we like to give uh this is the number one lifestyle wellness podcast in the hood uh, don't listen to us, but listen to the podcast. Y'all know all the lingo. I don't know nothing about women, vaginas, or relationships, but we are here to give advice. If you want to come see me perform for the rest of August, I'm in New York City. I'm either at the Comedy Cellar, I'm at the Stan Comedy Club, or I'm at Gotham Comedy Club. Hit me up on Instagram. I'll tell you exactly where I'm going to be. Or look at the website at the standnyc.com or the comedycellar.com, and they post about all their lineups. Um, other than that, thank you guys for enjoying the podcast. Please keep sharing, like, subscribe, tell your friends. A lot of y'all been telling me how much I love the podcast. We appreciate it. Continue to tell us, but also tell your friends to listen to the Adulthood Podcast. Tell them. Welcome back to the Adulthood Podcast, man. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. I know it's been a little bit too long. Welcome back. This is the number one lifestyle and wellness podcast in the hood. Yep. Uh, this is not a dating podcast. Nope. We teach people how to live life. There's a way to live life right. Yep. And me and DJ APM that teach you how to do that. Is me. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Adult Hub Podcast. We have a we have a special guest here today. Uh, guess who? Guess what the cat done dragged back? Drum roll. In. Say hello, Marty. Marty back. Ma is in the building. Beep, 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 beep. I'm thrilled. I Marty, heard... explain how you thought you could make it without us, but you came life, coming back. But life brought you right back. Full circle. <laughs> the adulthood Full podcast. Full circle. I know. I you know. know, people always think they could do better without you, <laughs> and then they're gone for like a couple weeks, and then they're like, "I want to come back." I can't. I don't like this. And we're good people, so we're like, "Sure, Marty, come on back. We'll have you back. Come on down. Right. Come back. Yeah." Welcome back. I'm thrilled. <laughs> Welcome did you, back. Did you chase the reins? No. That was that was a one-time ordeal. Oh, that was a one-time ordeal. Where'd a you go? Ordeal. Okay. Uh, I went to Paris for a bit. There you go. Bonjour. And Europe. Yeah, I went to Paris, and then I went to Finland because I heard they had puffins. Yeah. They don't. Okay. What's, what's puffins? <laughs> Maybe Google it next time before you get on a flight to, to go. <laughs> what's puffins? Puffins are like the cute bird with the red and orange beaks that they have in like Alaska and Iceland. And I was like, I feel like emotionally I'm in a space where a puffin might help. And so I flew all the way there. That's so white. That's such a white thing to do. <laughs> I've never in my not, life. It's not like regular, I never in my life woke up and not, felt like I needed to see a puffin. It's not like regular white. This is like yeah, in tune with nature. Alaska white. white. Like, yeah, yeah, Alaska white. Like that's different. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't want to go to Alaska and I didn't want to go to Iceland. So I was like, I feel like I saw on TikTok there were puffins in Finland. I got all the way to Finland. I went to the water. I started asking. There's no puffins in and Finland. And that's where you messed up. You went to TikTok and you didn't go to the dollhood pod because had we would have told you don't do that. There's no puffin in finland <laughs> we would have told you don't do that yeah you know it's funny it's you bring up a good point because people like this this podcast is really hitting we're resonating helping with people people. We are people, helping. people are sending questions i actually we all been away i i got stopped at the airport um, oh yeah i was at the airport and i was twice actually okay. i was the, the, the second time i was going through customs and this young lady was with her uh i don't know if it was her dad or or so she was with an older gentleman mm -hmm. and uh, we were going through customs and she turned around and she was like, hey, I listen to the podcast. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a, she was like, she's very polite. She didn't want to bother. Which, by the way, I got to let people know, if you see us out, you know, Make how, like, a scene. You know how like some celebrities, they're like, oh, don't bother me while I'm eating. You Make, see us out while we're eating? Come Make up a to scene. us. Sit down. Have a seat. Make a scene. We want to hear about this. Absolutely. Like, I don't understand this modest. This is revolutionary. Yeah. You I'm know like, I mean? no, don't I didn't want to bother you. I'm the, like, don't want to bother me. The name of our, uh, like our followers are adulterers. Adults. Right. We you do this for the up. people. Yeah. Don't be modest. Like, I don't care if I'm with my family, whoever you see me with. I, come up. Have yeah. a seat. Yeah. Make yourself at home. Say something. Yeah. We want to hear it. Absolutely. We and 
We do this for free, but we want the love. Exactly. And we'll shout you out. So yeah. you can tell your friends, like, oh, they shouted me out. Yep. Yeah. We'll shout you out. And I went, I was in- Did uh, you get her name at the airport? No, no. I forgot. I, I got her name. She was so shy. She wow. was like, she didn't need, she was like running away as she said. <laughs> I'm like, no, come back. Give me more compliments. Yeah. It made my whole trip. But I was in Montreal the, the week before. I did okay. the Just for Last Festival. Okay. We'll get into that. And- uh and at the festival, I had people coming up to me telling me they, they're adulterers. They listen to the podcast. That is hilarious. We've changed their life. They're that now is getting fire. a divorce. They're leaving their wives. Uh -huh. And it's like, I'm like, good. That's what we're here for. Hey, man. Like, man, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. That's revolutionary to me. A, a couple people have actually messaged me. And this is this is like a great honor. A couple okay. people have actually messaged me and was like, dude, like, honestly, we can't listen to this podcast in public because we're just <laughs> we're just laughing so much. It's just so embarrassing. That's the best feeling. Yeah. People are like, somebody sent me a photo of them on the bus and they were crying. Like, literally, that they were crying. And they were like, I'm listening to the podcast right now. We need now. to make that a t-shirt. Yeah, the crying. Oh, man. Yeah. I was, I'm going to see if I, I, I still have the... It was one of those pictures that delete right oh, away. Oh, but damn. it was like tears in our eyes. If I could get that photo, I'm definitely going to make it a t-shirt. Whoever you are that was this New York City bus. Yeah, it was in New York. Whoever uh, you are, please... I hope you have that. Was it Instagram? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get yeah, it, and then we're gonna to make that into t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, it was them crying. They were listening that's to the fire. funeral, the funeral etiquette episode, <laughs> and they were just crying about how how funny it was. That's fire. But that's the good thing about what we do is like we're not trying to be funny. No, we're trying to be we're trying to educate, literally, and inspire. Yeah, and teach people how to live. Honestly, you were away. I have definitely. I, I didn't know I was back. Yeah, you came straight from the airport. Clearly, I came straight from the airport. Where, from, where were you? Uh, so I, I was Euro tripping. I was in London and then Belgium and then I finished out in Santorini. Oh Greece. my God, you huh. did the trifecta. Yeah, you Santorini, know Santorini. That that's a vacation. Oh, if I ever man. heard one. If I mean I ever, TikTok. If I ever seen it. Then. Yeah, TikTok has every girl wanting to go to Santorini. Yep. How was it? It was incredible. Way yeah. better than TikTok could ever even show. It. Yeah. Yeah. You got good photos. Uh, I got good photos. I got good videos. Yeah. I had a great time. I had an amazing time. But I also thought about the adulterers. Even though I was on vacation, I was still thinking about Charles. And I was like, you know what? We gave wedding etiquette. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we gave funeral etiquette. Yeah. Didn't we? Party I etiquette. I feel like we gave party etiquette. You know, let us know if the, the freaks is there. You yeah. Know, like I saw a lot of... Uh, um, Interaction with people saying you should know that the freaks is the freaks is gonna be there. Yeah, you know, yeah. if it's your brother. Yeah. So now I feel like it's only right that we give vacation etiquette, ladies and gentlemen. Brought to you by. Wait, are we doing vacation or vacation? We're gonna because it's two totally different things. We're gonna go into both of them. Okay. Yeah. Well, let let's start with let's start with vacation etiquette. Vacation etiquette. Because I feel like a lot of a lot of adulterers are probably listening, and they're like, you know, I'm thinking about going to a on a vacation with my significant other, uh -huh. but I'm not exactly 100 percent sure this person knows how to act in public. Mm. Right? Okay. Not okay. foreign public. So, are you thinking is this the first time that you're going with the significant other? Yeah, like okay. a first time. That's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure yeah. because it's one thing how you behave in uh in New York and in, in Florida and California, but but behavior in Santorini, it's not universal. It's not. But here's my question also. Is this the first time? So, like, they've gone on a vacation before, but this is the first time where passports are involved. Like, you're going an extended distance. Yeah. I mean, I would say, like, if you're dating somebody and this is the first time. You know what? Let's open it up for more. Like, let's say you, you go on vacation. You've been on a couple one with your partner. Oh, but okay. you just don't like how, they're, how they act on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Play this podcast. Just do it casually. Cash. Put it on in the car casually Cash. and and let them hear it you yeah. know don't say it's for them right just let them hear this yes and 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 hopefully we can get you 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 or your partner to behave better when you go on these trips um i must also say that i was spritzing my ass off in greece right? oh i was yeah, i can't I like mean, it to the point where i like this uh, there might be the spritz shuffle where it's yeah, just like a no, i mean woo, my teeth I'm are spritzing. orange yeah my teeth are and, orange. i was drinking so many aperol spritz in bro, the last two weeks bro i would we went to one spot and they had something called Oh, the Aperol. I need to get the name right because I, I confuse it between Aperol Passion and Aperol. Aperol Passion. Oh, my, oh my God, bro. Yeah. I was just like, if I didn't care too much about my dater, I would no Aperol Pleasure. Hold on. Look Aperol at this. Pleasure. What if is this? What, what are they called? Mixologists, bartenders, whoever? Aperol Prosecco, Framboise Liqueur, and Pink Grapefruit Soda. This if, sounds good. If we have any um, $28 for one? Jeez. 28 euros. Jeez. Yes, exactly. That's a $33 drink. That's why I can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that um, looks good, though. 
any bartenders or mixologists that are listening to the show, please send us a pre-made Aperol Pleasure. You know what I'm saying? We'll shout you out. We need to have somebody sponsor us with drinks. We do. We need to do the Aperol episode. Like the Aperol hour. Yeah. Um, but that's great, man. You was yeah. at Santorini drinking. I mean, is there anything better in life? Spritzing. I, I connected with another person because of the spritz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you're a black man, because they don't they don't expect us to know. If the plot twist about the about the apple roll, and then it. we order, and they're like, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, it's a yeah. fun time. Uh, yeah, it is a fun time. Um, now, have you have you now? This was a vacation. This was a full vacation. Yeah. Yes. Now, have have you ever been on a on a vacation where your significant other at the at the moment gets a little too drunk um no no, no that's no, never happened no that's never happened i've yeah. actually been the one who over intoxicated yeah but you're a professional this isn't your first rodeo that's, i mean thank you for you're saying that. you overly it. intoxicated is better than most people sober thank it's you just, i really appreciate it's more that. collected than most people sober it's very true so that's not the same thing that's but an absolute I, fact i've had situations where, I, where i've had to take care of, of, of people of your significant being too sloppy. yeah did i ever tell you about the drunk ecuadorian no i told you about the drunk ecuadorian you have not about the story on the date i went when she got too drunk no Please expound. Yeah, this is one time I went on a date. This was a first date, uh, and uh, we we met at a club, and and we went to a restaurant. It was like a lounge, so mm. it was like it was like food, drinks. Uh, drinks, music, and we were getting to know each other. And we were doing, you know, ordering drinks or whatever. I had like we ordered in rounds, so I drank the exact same amount she drank, okay. which was about four drinks or whatever. But, okay. You know, a lot of times, I don't mean to make it a gender thing, but a lot of times the women can drink like. The men. This is very true. So I'm, we're we're going back and forth, uh, four or five. We probably did five rounds. Uh, by the time the 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 night finished, she was just completely wasted. Completely wasted. I had to carry this girl out of the club. No, carry her out of the club. Was she like petite? Like what was her body? She was petite. Like? She was she was she was petite. Thank God. And then what was the food intake like? Like, did y'all just nibble? Or did we didn't eat. eat? It, didn't it, eat? It, 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 I, I thought she'd ate previously. So she set herself up for food. Yeah, I, I don't know what your eating situation. If you're going to go out on a date and you're not going to go eat, I asked if she was hungry. She said, no, we just had a couple drinks, mm. you know? And uh, I didn't know where she lived because I, I, when I picked her up, I didn't, like, I picked her up, but I didn't put the jeep thing in the gps so i didn't know where her house was uh-huh so like i could take you into her neighborhood but i didn't know where her house, where her house was, was so i wouldn't know where to where to take dr- her to where to take her to um so i ended up i have I had to take her to my house um and uh she vomited all over my bathroom uh i put her i put her on my bed she vomited on my floor i uh i i stood in on the couch and I cleaned everything up, you know, and by the time, and then she woke up in the morning and uh, she was just embarrassed. And then I took her home and then we dated for three months. Oh, that's great. That's the beginning of a love story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But, but when you go you're on. A real care, you're a real caring man. See, that's my thing. I'm a very empathetic guy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. On high. Yeah. A lot of guys like to do, you know, they like to, oh, I'm big, bad. And I'm, t- I, I'm an empathetic guy. There you, you know, go. I, I have sisters, I have nieces and I'm a good person. I don't want, you know, I, if, if it were me, I wouldn't want anything to happen to us. So I took Absolutely. good care. I took good care of her on that, uh, on that date. Um, it was why, I mean, I feel like I've cleaned up vomit a lot in my life. Wow. Yeah. More than like one should. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, especially for someone who you just met. Yeah, like, I did it I with somebody a, that just we have met to be, more than like, once. We, we have to know each other for me to like clean up your vomit. Like that's a. I mean, what are you gonna do when it's on your bed? Your bed. Yeah, that's very true. You know, and she was she was embarrassed. She was very thankful did though. Did she think that she was a drinker? Like, I need to know more behind this thought process. Well, you know, sometimes these ladies they just think they can drink. They or, just think they you know they or, just have a false sense of reality. Or you was just like having such a great time because that happens too because that's happened to me with the spritzes i'm having so much fun i'm spritzing i'm spritzing and i'm 30 spritzes in i can't imagine me going on a date with a person first date and i end up vomiting that night yeah i, mean, I haven't vomited since 2018. that's a good record yeah, yeah. so i don't i don't you should consider yourself blessed. i i have vomited during the pandemic but i think i had covid i mean i, I think everybody vomited during the pandemic yeah if so that doesn't it, even then, count yeah i think yeah. that was that's a part of your record. Too. Right. I like, can't even yeah. imagine that happening to me. Yeah. I mean, if ladies, if you go on a date with a guy and he throws, and he up, throws up, that is the biggest red flag. Leave him. It would be less of a red flag if he hit you. Yeah. It would be less. I would say maybe work it out. Like keep your shit together. But if he throws up, like run. What if it's 
projectile too. Like if you don't want you don't want that you don't want to be part of that bloodline. No, definitely not. You Absolutely don't, not. You, you get out as quick as you can. Yeah, because that means he's weak stomached and a weak man. Yeah, I would say you know, who doesn't know his limits. Mm -mm. And that's a good point that you bring. But like, especially being foreign now, you know, coming back full circle on the vacation. If you're in a foreign place. And you might not have access to Uber, or maybe you don't want to do the passport plan on your AT&T, so you don't want to pay for the mobile. So basically, you're just designated to communication at the resort or anywhere where there's Wi-Fi. Yeah. You can't really be over-intoxicated in a foreign land, especially if you don't speak the language. You know what I mean? Like, you. First of all, I understand why like some people hate Americans when we go overseas. Sure. Because we expect everybody to speak English. Sure. That's As crazy. they should. As That's they crazy. should. I feel like everyone should speak English. But the, the, the crazy part is a lot of people, they kind of just do. So you're like in between. Most people speak it. So when you don't. Sorry, dude. It's a problem for me. Yeah. So. And this is me coming from a family who speaks Spanish. Wait, you speak Spanish? Yeah. I feel it's like. It's my first language. That. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. First language is Spanish. I didn't learn English till I was like. Six, seven. I'm pretty sure I still don't know English. Yeah. Like, I try. Yeah. And I, I look on Google, but there's still some stuff that's just like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But anywho, don't over-intoxicate in a foreign land. Um, Definitely... Or, or listen, it, look, I'm not I'm not going to pass judgment on everyone. There's, look, you work hard. Everybody, we're adults here, adulterers. We work hard. There's times where you just want to let loose and Woo! drink. But have a plan. If you're gonna, If you're going to get wasted... Tell your partner so so he or she knows not to, right? Two. Yeah. You know, like have a have a plan. Don't just don't just both of you be super intoxicated in the middle of Mexico and now you're getting sold by the cartel and you're wondering how did I end up here? Well, you ended up here because you didn't listen to the Adulthood podcast and have a plan. On all platforms. Um speaking about that, but there's also what about at the all inclusive resort? Because the reason why I bring that up. I learned how to drink by some people who frequented one of this is in a previous uh trip, people who had frequented there before, and they come with the it was it was an older crew, like I'm talking about 60s, 70s, and they oh, come man, with the with the flask, like the thermos. Yeah. And they go up and you know, I, I, this is gonna sound I don't know, but like, hey Jose, fill me up to the top. Listen, I'm the king of all inclusives. Yes. Okay, I did. I went through a phase in my life where I went to at least 25 all inclusive resorts that in the is Dominican Republic. Incredible. So I can talk to you about all inclusives. Break it down. And the trick about the all inclusives, talk even to me. if you get the drink package, I would recommend if you are flying to a foreign country, stop in duty free, duty free, and buy a bottle of what you like to drink. Mm -hmm. Because there is a fair shot that either the resort doesn't have what you like to drink, nope, or it's fake. They, they have it and it's fake. Yes. So my recommendation is save up forty five dollars and buy a bottle of what you or your lady likes to drink yes. at the duty free. The and room. also when you sit at the bar with your own bottle and just tell the bartender to give mixer so you can drink, you look better than everybody else. Mm. Like there's honest, like you're not supposed to be better than, but you look better than everyone, mm. which is nice mm. when you're on vacation. It's nice mm. to be better than people. You just dropped wisdom. I, I never even thought about that. I didn't know that, that they could pour it for you. After oh yeah. Before. Oh yeah. Oh. And they respect you more. Mm. Because you bring your own. Because they're like, this person is not, I'm, a not a, I'm not a big fan of like, I'm not a fan of like, all you can eat of like whatever we have. No. Like, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Like, I, I, like it, you look more distinguished if mm. they're like, no, no, you guys don't have what I would like. Distinguished vacation. Man. Yeah. That's a t-shirt. Yeah. And then if it's the first time with your lady, she's impressed. But my thing is too, also, you can't be going all crazy with the all you can eat of everything that we have because like... You got to think about your your gastronomical uh, construction. I it's, mean, I got a stomach virus at one of these resorts. Did you from the all you can eat? Yeah. Was this the first trip that you went with the person that you went with? No, this is might have been like my second trip. Okay, so like y'all was, was bad. Y'all are more familiar with each other though. I mean, we shouldn't have been this familiar. It was, <laughs> it was bad. It was, I, it was one of those. It was one of those. I, I I almost broke up with her after the trip. I mean, it wasn't her fault, but I was just like, I, I feel I like can't, I you can't saw me too vulnerable. Too vulnerable. You saw me too vulnerable. I it can't was, show myself in front of you. Dude, it was a bad, oh, man. it was bad. That's what I'm saying. So like, you got to be with somebody, especially like somewhere like Santorini, where you, you're paying, this wasn't all inclusive. This is every meal is a charge. Yeah. You got to be with somebody that like, you definitely care about a lot, at least to, to show that level of vulnerability. 
I mean, I would do the same. I mean, I like I'm the kind of guy I paid it forward, right? Because she took care of me, and then I met the drunk Ecuadorian, and then I took care of uh, her. Full circle. But that's Calmer. not. But see, this is that's not my fault. Like, Calmer it's one thing energy. to get too intoxicated and throw up. It's another thing to eat like food that's contaminated and shit your pants. That's a completely different. And you don't stop shitting. That's Sorry, what, that's it's the part it's that just they don't vom- tell you. it was just on. Uh, it was it's very uncomfortable. It was bad. Wow. And, and 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 honestly, I was with a good person who took care of me. Did you have like something? like uh like exotic like scallops or something what did you do that at that point i wasn't even like I, I don't even remember it was just like i it was like a normal i had like a normal meal it wasn't even anything crazy Ugh. and it just destroyed me dude man i had to go to the hospital at the res- it's nothing like no, for yeah real? going to the resort hospital Damn, bro, it's nothing that's more crazy. embarrassing than that that's crazy than being carted off to a resort hospital <laughs> <laughs> And you're not even drunk. No, I wasn't drunk. No, man. No, that was bad. That was that's pretty bad. bad. Yeah, because yeah. because when you when you, when you get these stomach viruses, sometimes you you want to you vomit so much that you like you start crying like at a point where you're like you, I have no more. Like bro, I you're in the be. fetal position on yeah, the floor. Yeah, I was I was literally in the fetal position <laughs> yeah. on the floor. She was uh, petting me and calling me a little bitch. Wow. No, not the little bitch part. She was a good person, but okay. yeah, I'm maybe sure, inside her head. I'm though. sure that's how she felt for yeah. sure. She she was texting her you know, friends. That's why I'm scared. This is a total random sidebar, but that's why I'm scared of what is a neural link or whatever, whatever Elon's working on. So like you can like know what people are thinking. Like at least you could make a joke about it and say, like, no, she was a good person. What if she was like, This little bitch is in the fetal position after eating some scallops? I told him not to eat the scallops. I think that would make you feel worse than the actual stomach virus. I mean, I don't understand this whole obsession with wanting to know what other people think. I couldn't think of something I wanted to know less. Yeah. I feel like we should reverse Neuralink where you can't know what anyone thinks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the adult. You just pie. live your life not knowing nothing. He's on fire. That's the best way to do it, I He's think. He's on fire. I've never wanted to know what somebody thought. No. Definitely not. Ever. That shit feels wild invasive. Yeah. Like going to the hospital after a stomach virus. Cause like they have to check, do they check both sides? Inside, inside, inside? See, but some she was one of these girls that had like, you know, some of these some of these uh ladies have that motherly trait. Mm, the where archetype. they like Yeah, where okay. they like to take care. She she had that, which okay. is which is nice. Nurture, nurturing. Yeah, that nurturing. Does that yeah. still exist in terms I don't see it. I don't see it a lot. Mm. I don't see it. These these I, Hold on. I haven't done this in a long time. I'm sorry. Uh, what do you think, Marty? Yeah, I can't see Marty taking care of a guy shitting his pants. <laughs> In the DR? I think, I think she would leave. <laughs> that night? I think she would go see the birds. <laughs> the puffins? Yeah, the puffins. <laughs> no, not at all. Yes, I would. I would leave. I would be like, this feels like a you problem. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> see? <laughs> see? A dog let, pod. <laughs> let you deal with that. Yeah, and- see? And I'll see you in a couple hours. Last That's days. a pro tip. They don't make them how they used to. They don't. They don't. That's a pro they tip. They do not make them how they used to. You know, if you ever feel like you're gonna have explosive diarrhea on a, on an international vacation, go with someone who you get nurture vibes from. Well, see the good thing about go ahead. Oh, would is that what you would want though? Because I would want someone to just leave me alone. Like, go well, away. guys, guys, like, like mm. guys prefer like a motherly. A thing a lot of times mm. so it's like if you're gonna be a, there you're just gonna be an asshole then yeah leave but if you're gonna be there and you're to gonna care. care for me like how my mom would then yeah please stay right yeah you should unpack that a little more <laughs> well, stay this tuned is the good thing. i feel like this is the good thing about the podcast right like because a lot of you are probably listening to maybe you're listening to this and you're wondering would my Why partner take care that? of me oh. yeah that too but <laughs> <laughs> Some of you might be wondering, like, I wonder if my partner would take care of me if I mm. had explosive diarrhea and mm. vomit. And now you can play this podcast and just kind of look over that, and be so, like, and that, "That's the favorite game that couples play." Yeah. So, oh, what so do you think? What of do you this? think? Yeah. Yeah. Or and, if this were to happen, yeah. And, and I'm sure, like, a lot of the girls who listen uh, probably subscribe to Marty's thing of like, mm. "Screw you! I don't care about men. I don't care about what you do. I'll yeah. let you die before All men I help die. you." Yeah. And if that's how you feel, then that's fine too. But like, I think we you love should, everybody. Yeah, but I think you should like try to be a better person. Hmm. 
No, because that's not, there's a huge difference between someone getting food poisoning and vomiting and making sure that they have water and are good and are set and someone having explosive <laughs> diarrhea and being like, I'm going to sit and pet your hair and make sure you make, like, no. What if you had explosive diarrhea, I feel like someone a, would pet, a, somebody would yeah, help you. Pet your hair, but get you some ginger ale. I wouldn't want that. I would want them to go away. <laughs> That, that's a good me, point. That's leave a good me point. the frick alone. But yeah. I think I think you should unpack that. The fact that you can't take love. I think you My should speak to somebody about that. Why turned. don't you know how to receive love, Marty? What's if, that about? If somebody, if I had a fever and somebody wanted to sit with me, I'd be like, okay, that's nice. But if I had food poisoning, I'd be like, leave me alone. Yeah. That's, to be honest, when I was in fair. the I did not have explosive diarrhea. That's good. I did have explosive vomit, though. Did you really? Which is almost worse. Wait, to be for honest. Real? Yeah, what that's happened? that's worse. Like projectile vomit con constantly. Yeah. That's worse. Because in diarrhea, you could just stay in the bathroom, right? Damn. But what, explosive vomit. But yeah. what happened? Like you got sick, you drank Yeah, for the fruit poison. Oh, oh, for real? Oh, yeah, damn. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It might have been, you know, one of those E. coli. Something. Yeah, one of them things. Gonorrhea, whatever. Well, if it's any um if it's any consolation, I had a great time. I didn't get sick. That's great. Yeah. That's good to like, hear. I, it was really amazing. That's good to hear. I can't wait to go back. Now, was this your first trip with the with the, with the the lady? No, no, no. We, we've been all over. Oh, yeah, okay. Was, so, y'all professional. Yeah, we're professional. already know what's yeah, what. Like, TSA pre-check, you know what I'm saying? Clear with the TSA pre-check. You know, uh, we got even to the point where we got a, um, a handheld scale just to get to 50. I, this is a good point. I'm a terrible packer. I don't realize. I just realized that because, like, I pack like a New Yorker, where it's just like I need options. Timberlands, yeah, jean shorts, like, and also, Yankee yeah, hat. I need to be super, you know, flea at all times. It's yeah. like, yeah, bro, no, that shit does not work when you're, you know, your 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 suitcase is seventy five pounds and the limit's fifty. Yeah, you know, yeah, because there, they, do you you bring up a, a nice point? There is an art to packing. There is, especially when you're gonna travel, especially when you're gonna travel with a with a partner. Because yes. if if you travel with a lady, right, she's gonna pack her bag, yep. and then she's gonna throw to you all the things that don't fit in her bag and, and just yours. be like just put it in your bag yes but but your stuff weighs more than her stuff yes because women's stuff don't weigh a lot it's lighter right everything is men's feathery. stuff weigh a lot yeah so now you're at the check now you're checking in and the whole line is waiting for you looking at looking you like at an you asshole because you're unpacking stuff you're taking out you know yeah all the stuff that she put into your bag yep which is you got to take care of that at home and another thing too is also airports are high stress locations yes right so yes. make sure that you definitely keep yourself, you know, in check if you got to do some CBD or whatever, do some meditations or whatever, because you will be stressed. I don't think there's ever a point where you go to the airport and you're not stressed unless you're, you're flying on a private jet. And the reason why I say that also, too, is because like, all right, you know, we're checking in our bags. We're flying from Belgium to Greece. We're checking in our bags. We get to the airport all early, like trying to be, you know, we listen to the doll hood pod, so we're trying to be responsible. Mm -hmm. And um, the other like ticket ticker guy or whatever uh, for the airline kicks my bag on the terminal while it's going to like, you know, go to the plane. And I see him, he sees me see him do it. And I'm just like, I really want to just fight you right yeah. now. Yeah. You couldn't just, you yeah. know, even if you to push my bag, like, okay. The yeah. fact that you kicked it, it's just like something about that was very disrespectful. Yeah. They, then I had to catch myself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You don't want to mess up your floral print uh, two piece suit two, in a fight. Uh, and right? I and I'm, I go crazy for a short a short fit. Yeah. Short suit. Yeah. Forget about it. Yeah. I mean, though I have I have one similar like that. I, I kind of wish you would have told me I would have worn mine. But uh, my bad. But I think I think that that is important. And also, I feel like listen when you're picking a partner in in life. I think it's important to try to find somebody that compliments you. Okay. A lot of times I feel like we're looking for the same person who's like us. No. But it's better to have somebody who's not like you. Yeah. So you can level each other out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because some people out here, like, I drink, I do drugs, I do this, I want a person who does that. Mm. You don't want that. No. You want to date a cop. Mm. That doesn't do any of the things you do. Mm. That way, when you go crazy, you have somebody to reel you in. And not only that, if you get like arrested or somebody, you got somebody to bail you out. Yeah, you got parking. Yeah, like that's a very good strategy. Yeah. The only thing is, like, one of my homeboys dated a cop, and she basically like just. I mean, I guess women do this anyway, but she went through his whole life, and like, I know where you're at at all times. I'm like, oh, the girl was a, a cop. Or the guy was the a girl was a cop. Oh yeah, Mrs. that's a little officer. Scary. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is scary. Now, what do you think? Because you go on a tropical vacation with your lady. Yes. There's going to be bikinis. Mm -hmm. on, you know, maybe mm -hmm. be bikinis, thongs, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Now, do you Ray think- Ray Charles. Do you think there's a limit 
on two questions. First part, do you think is there such thing where you might tell your lady like, "Hey babe, don't wear this?" Oh, that you bring up a good point. Yeah. Um I think it depends on your comfortability with yourself number 1 and your comfortability number 2 with with her. Yeah. You know, cuz one thing I realized also too is that, you know, women especially when it's on vacation time, the, the the and the the way society is shaped right now, everything is a little bit risque. Everything is a little bit, you know, pushing. Yeah. It's not there's not two piece bikinis anymore. It's like floss thongs it's and a everything floss like that. thong yeah. and nipple patches. Yeah. But you see, a lot of times I find like the ladies kind of try to put it on men, and they'll be like, and uh, and they'll be like, you know, uh, men are you, you're so insecure. Right? Mm. Why should I? Why should I have to do this when you should be secure? And I'm like. I don't think it's insecurity. You're wearing two nipple patches and a piece of floss through your vagina. So it's going to get me in trouble, right? Like when you go to the bathroom, there's going to be guys that are like, hey, look, she's wearing floss in her vagina. And yeah. Maybe we should try to talk to her. And then as a man, I'm going to have to be like, hey, no, I know she's dressed like she's a prostitute, but she's not. This is my wife. You're going to have to just be there 24 hours. Right. You yeah. Can't, basically, you can't let her out of your sight. So it's not like an insecurity thing. No. I mean, if if I went, if I was out in like a banana hammock jockstrap, you know, it, it, it's it, it probably. Wait, did I put those pictures online? I'm just playing. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> it, I, it probably. I, I thought that was sorry. <laughs> it probably would not be the same. Like, I feel like women wouldn't. Be saying, but you know what but, I find? I find that like women be going on these vacations and they'll post a picture of them in like a bathing suit or whatever, and that's clearly like a thirst trap, which I'm fine. I'm I'm pro thirst trap. Uh -huh. Like do do trap, right? But then a man would just post their face and a woman be like, You're thirst trapping. Yeah. And I'm that's like That's very true. It's just my face. But another thing too is that like, you know, men's bodies are gross. Disgusting. Like, that's the that's the that's where the in the inequality is yeah. where it's just like nobody's really trying to see no dude or no banana hammock or nothing no, like disgusting. that. Like that's that's real gross. Like I know dudes that are even into dudes and they're like, yo, put some clothes on, bro. Yeah, like disgusting. what are you doing? Like get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Versus women, you know, there's literally a variety of women for every person where like and, and this is my favorite where girls would be like, oh my God, girl, you look so good. And then they start doing that women thing and it's just like, oh okay. Okay, like that's not gonna happen with guys. I mean, unless it's a short short suit, then it's just like, hey, that's a cool short suit. But like, yeah, that's where the line gets drawn. Yeah, I find that I think that when a when a woman like I think a woman seeing me in a fitted custom suit is the equivalent of me seeing a woman in like a bikini thong. And then uh, don't let you have a haircut like a shape. Yeah, up, like if I have a shape, yeah. if I have a shape up and a custom fitted suit on, Nothing. and you're my lady, I feel like you you want to keep me inside. Creamsicle. I feel like yeah. you're like, why are you wearing that? Yeah, like yeah, is that energy? Like she'll like, get mad at go you. Go put something else yeah. on. Who and I'm you, like, I'm who? going to a wedding. I'm gonna wear the suit. Who's They're getting like, married? Where? Why are you yeah. wearing a suit? I didn't go know put you. on sweatpants and, or and not gray ones. And she's going with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find like that's the equivalent. And now it's tough because you go some place like europe you know europe they're not like americans you know they, they they look better okay so they I wouldn't go that far i mean the the, the they're skinnier that's a fact I, uh, okay. europeans are skinny that's like their thing that's like the one thing i mean uh why do you think so i don't know i think you got some marty you got some insight they have food restrictions oh yeah that oh. we don't have so i think i think in austria alone they have something like 400 food restrictions of what they're not allowed to put in their food that we put in a lot of our foods. Which so sounds terrible to me. There's significantly like less processed food. Mm. And there's that. not a culture of processed food either. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Marty is back in the building dropping yeah. facts. We're not sure that's even right, but if it is, that's AI? If, if it is, um, <laughs> I, I, I think that, uh, that I don't like that. I want my food to taste good. To have all of the nasty stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I feel you. But you go so. But I was saying you go on these, and a lot of times these women over there, you know, they don't have the same holdups. So you might see, you might be walking through the beach, and there's a woman topless, just titties everywhere, pantyless, yeah, just tanning. I, I didn't see pantyless, but definitely. Titties. Yeah, I mean, maybe we go to different resorts. But when mm. when I was out there, you definitely you definitely see the and and as a guy, if you're there, if you're there with with your partner as a man, don't be staring. No, definitely not. You bring up a good point. You want to get the darkest shades possible, Ray, Ray, uh, Ray Charles. You want to just, you know, you don't see nothing. Focus on your partner. You focus on your I partner. I saw. I saw. You look the other way. Yep. Look or, up. Or if you're a professional, know how to look without seeming like you're looking. How about if your partner is the one that points it out? 
Well, if your partners, here's the thing, because a lot of these, a lot of men will fall for these, because because a mm. lot of younger guys listen mm. to our podcast. People mm. hit me up with their problems, because a lot of young men are like, oh, they wonder what we would say about this. Because you might be out with your girl, right? And it might be an attractive woman that walks by. Let's say she's wearing a scantily clad bikini, and she might say something like, look at that girl. Like, oh, what do you think of her, right? Now, don't fall for this. Don't start complimenting the girl telling telling your lady how good she looks how you wish your lady would look don't don't start doing this that's crazy immediately when she points out this girl immediately you got to look at her and take a good look and just be like it ain't for me boom wisdom even if it is for you but th- it's a test mm. and if you start fail. you're gonna fail the test because uh-huh. a lot of times the girl would look the opposite of what your girl looks uh-huh. like so if you have a slim girl it'll be a, a thick girl curvaceous. if you have a thick girl it'll be a slim, slim. girl you got a tall girl it'll be a short girl mm. that's her testing you to see. to see if you like girls that aren't like her dun, dun. and if you say yes this is gonna make her more Problems. insecure and there's Nobody wants an You're going to ruin partner. your trip. You're, You're going to ruin, ruin the rest of your trip. You're going to ruin you, it. You won't. Even Aperol Spritz can't save that. So rule of thumb, when they ask you your opinion about other girls, just be like, at best, if you can't say nothing, just be like, I can see how other guys would like that, but it's not for me. Mm, straight up. Pro tip. Wisdom. Ian Pro Lara tip. Live. Yeah. Um, You bring up a good point also. So to piggyback off of that, I think it's very important that like, if you are going on a vacation, you want to look for places, and it might sound crazy, but you want to go to like adults only. You don't really want. I love an adults only. You don't want kids running around because other people's are the worst. kids they'll mess up your kids ruin the world. They'll ruin your whole vacation. Kids are the worst thing in the world, especially on vacation. Yeah, like, I, and I know some people listen. They have kids, and they'll probably agree. That's great. They'll agree. Yeah, kids are not good. They call somebody, save some money for like a sitter or something, or bring the sitter with you and get them their own hotel on the other side of town i mean they're ruining your whole like, vacation i feel like every flight i'm on there's a kid sitting next to me messing it up and and i don't want them there no i i, I don't want them there i i want if, if i'm president kids kids aren't allowed to fly or if, like if you have kids you got to fly private they or they should have like disney airlines or something somewhere that's like my it's rule catered, it's catered to them no it's true that's my rule i yeah, agree disney airlines take them on disney yeah, airlines take them on there. where it's a hundred thousand kids, kids crying running around yep. playing tag yep they playing their video games yep. they don't got headphones nope. the sound is on yep it's crying. the worst yep boogers all of that shit. fly private yeah that's my platform so. Fly private 2024. Yeah. If you, if you, the airline should be for law abiding citizens with, with who, who can, who can care for themselves. Yes. That's, that's what I say. And who don't have to care for other people. Yes. Who are yes. technically not even people. Yes. Like they don't even have IDs. Yeah. Now, kid, now I will say this. I have sat next to or around some kids where I'm like, this kid was very well behaved. This kid mm. behaved better than the adults. Mm. But uh, it's too it's too rare, and I can't tell who's who. So none of them fly. But like, let me tell you. So you know, we're at uh, we're going to like I think we're having breakfast one day. And you and like, your lady? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the resort. Where, where, where are we? We're in, this is Santorini. Santorini. The That's resort. Greece. Yeah, Greece. The resort is on the water. Infinity pool Ooh, overlooking the pool. Infinity or whatever, pool. Whatever. Yeah. It goes on and forever. It's a cool. It's a couple that comes with their two kids and their oh, two boy, kids. Here we go. Like with the couples the, with two kids. But prior to the kids being there, it's like. It's almost like paradise. It is paradise. It's paradise. It's not almost. The it music, paradise. the music is like Sade. You got Aperol spritzes everywhere. Everybody's wearing white and linens. Like, oh, okay. And, and then here they these come kids with TikTok. Oh, Fuck out of here. Oh boy, the kids with the TikToks. Domestic terrorists. It's the worst. And it's look, ridiculous. One day we'll have kids, probably. Yeah. You know, I still haven't got my results back from the doctor if I'm able to, but I'll, I'll find out. And if I do want kids, sure, we're going to have these little demons, mm-hmm. but we're not we're, like once we're there, I feel like I don't blame the kids because mm. kids are just little people mm-hmm. who haven't learned yet. Like mm-hmm. the kids, they can't listen to the adulthood podcast, no, not yet. but the parents can. Yeah. So I always blame the parents. Blame them. So when I see your kids acting up, it's, I don't get mad at the kid. It's I look fault. at the dad. Yeah. I look at the stupid dad. It's his fault. And I blame him. Yeah. It's absolutely his fault. Yeah. Whoever he is, it's your fault, bro. Yeah. And then another thing I thought about also, you know, speaking about dads, an adulthood pro tip for men on a vacation. Yeah. Take like a photography class. Like take like an iPhone photography this is class. Very important. Very important for you, women. You yeah. will be like the MVP. Every yeah. anything, well, most desires that you want will come to fruition if you take a yeah. 
of a cell phone photography class. Know how to take photos. And you don't even got to take, go on YouTube. Learn yeah. on YouTube. It's yeah. just about angles. Yeah. It's just about the way you stand. But you got to learn how to do the flash and stuff. Yeah. Like, go on YouTube. Yeah. Quick tutorial on YouTube. It'll make your, it'll make it. Cause I mean, some of these girls, if they go on vacation, you could take him, you could take them to the best. You could take them to Bora Bora. But if they ain't get a good picture over there, you might as well have took them to Rockaway Beach. Legit. Cause it did not happen. Nope. That's the fact. photo is one of the most important parts it's, it's probably of the one, vacation. It's probably more important than the actual vacation to some I would to say some people. I would say I would say so. To some yeah. people. I would say you so. Know? There's girls that if you could take if you could take them to like a virtual reality place where they can get their beach photo and their airplane photo and their food photo, that would be the vacation. They would be fine with that. Don't and they have that in LA? Yeah, where you could rent out where you could rent out the influencer house and take all your photos. I think you could take some girls just there. Oh, okay. I and they'll be so. happy. How much do you think of Uber is from like LAX to to the house? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have to research that, but I have gotten into because Excuse me, men, we're different. We go on the vacation. We take three photos. That's it. That's it. To three photos. And it's like, all right, use that one. Yeah. We don't care. Yeah. It's not. I'm here to have a good time. Yeah. I, I want to be off my phone. Yeah. Plus, I'm here with a couple. I'm here with my girl. So who gives a f about pictures? Here's a question. And this is an, uh, an advanced level conversation. But what about the group vacation? Ooh, what are your a, thoughts on those? Because that's, that's, that's something that... uh. Uh, it's very critical. It can yeah. happen. It, oh, you might run into other groups on your vacation. You gotta have to. Here's the thing with the group the etiquette vacation. To know how to handle that. Here's the thing with the group vacation. You bring up a good point because this is a very tricky one. Pro tip. Because with the group vacation, right, you have to make sure that the other people, the other couples, are at the same place that you are, relationship wise. In your relation, okay. serious wise. Please right? expound. If you and your lady are in a serious relationship who've been dating for a while, right, and you want to go on vacation with a bo with your boy, you can't have your boy bring a girl he just matched with off Tinder yeah. on this vacation where they're they're basically on on a on a freak Nick honeymoon, yeah. and you and your girl left there like what is going on? Yeah, you need to you need to vet these relationships yeah. and make sure you're close in range to where the other people are. Now to expound on that. I I was listening to another show in my you know my research and um, the the host had brought up a topic of this you know the group vacation and specifically on like you need to know who you're going on vacation with I uh, agree. couples wise but specifically like you need to know who you can like start fucking in front of and I was just like wait what whoa what wait mean? a minute like I don't I don't think I need that level of comfortability to be on a vacation with someone where we're just like you know they just start fucking and it's just like if that's if you're a voyeur is a voyeur voyeur's watching right if you're a dis, what, what's the one where you like voyeurs, to get off i think they watch they watch who's the other one display what what do you like to do what's it called what i like to do personally no no, no not oh. you uh, those the people who like to have sex in front of other people oh those are uh well, exhibitionist. Exhibitionist. They, if you're an ex, you gotta let me know that you're an exhibitionist before we decide to like you know pay the uh the uh the installments for the vacation and 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 uh, and book the room. Like you can't just be like, oh yeah, I'm an exhibitionist on the trip. Like that's crazy. If I'm on a trip, if I'm on a vacation with a friend and him and his girl start having sex in front of me, I'm leaving. I immediately leave the resort and delete him from my phone. I'm gone. We can no longer be friends. How do you think that's okay? What is this, spring break? That's what are you doing? It, We're grown adults. You can't be having sex. Spring break 99? Like, yeah, that's crazy. This is, this is insane. Are people doing this? That's what I heard. Listen, if you're going to go on vacation and you, you're a swinger and you and your lady- You got like to let do, people know. Let people know. Let, let's say, listen, I know we're going to go to Cancun, but just so you know, I have a couple tequila shots in me and I, and I like to have sex with my wife in front of people. Yeah. Just let me know. And then at least you know. And then you're like, okay, we're not going with them. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? You can get your refund if you got an Amex. They'll they'll cancel all of the charges. Yeah. So that like those are things that you got to discuss in front. Also, here's why it's important that you know what point in a relationship you, you the couple's going is. Mm. You got to link up with the guy so you can get a rundown. Because mm. here's what you don't want. You don't mm. want to be on a vacation with your lady and let's say your boy and his lady, you're on vacation in Santorini and everything's going good. The Aperol, Passion, Fritz are are hitting. And all of a sudden, you see your boy get down on one knee and propose, propose. to his wife without you knowing. And now for the rest of your vacation, Pressure. your girl's looking at you like, well, we've been dating for two years and but the, but we're in Santorini. She, what are you going to do now? No neck control. She's just looking at you like, sir, right? I, if you if you propose in front of I think we spoke about this but if you propose in front of your girl if you're my friend and you propose in front of your girl in front of me I'd rather you have sex with them 
Mm. And, and I really said how much I hate that. Mm. So, so that just lets you know. Don't do this. Okay. Don't do this. I actually, it's funny you bring that up. I actually, I was on vacation. I saw a guy propose to his girl. She said no. Wow. <laughs> She said no. Wow. Yeah. Talk about not knowing where you're at in the relationship. Yeah, she was right? like, no. You know what? You bring up a good point. Is that something that you should talk about? Like, If you propose to your lady and she says no, I feel like there is a serious disconnect way, with you and your yeah. lady. The fact that you think she wants to get married, married and she doesn't. That's the last thing that she wants. Isn't that crazy? That's very crazy. That's How does that happen, knowing. Marty? How do you think that happens? That's you not knowing. That's no communication. No communication. How, like, how do you propose to your lady and she says no? Like, you should know whether she wants to get married. Every man I know got submitted into getting married. Like, they was they, they tapped out. It wasn't like UFC style. Yeah. yeah. The, the girl was either marry me or I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm tired of this shit. I yeah. don't come from this world of like you ask a girl to marry and you and don't know if she wants no. to get married. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't come from this world. I feel like it only happens publicly with like obsessive people. Like obsessive you, men? Yeah, like you only say no to a public proposal if the dude is obsessive. Because he wouldn't put you in that situation if he mm, wasn't obsessive. Yeah. But yeah. if you say no to a private proposal, I feel like that's just because it was like a hopeful thing. Like a private proposal, I can understand you saying no to. A mm. public proposal, that's one person's crazy and one person's not. Mm. Yeah, I feel like, look, a lot of you guys who are listening to this, may, maybe you have a girl that you are that you just started dating and you're not like there too serious with. So use this time to ask her, how do you feel about public proposals? Mm. How do you feel about proposing? And keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah. You so the see. next time you're on vacation, you don't make an ass out of yourself in Santorini. And then for the rest of the trip, you got to have breakfast with a woman you know that doesn't want to marry. Marry you. And now I'm uncomfortable because I see this. And, you, and every time I see you, I'm like, uh. And you're paying for 30, $35 drinks. Yeah. This is this is pro tips that nobody's talking about. You know what? But you bring up actually another good point, Marty. And uh, the point of the obsessive guy, right? And I, I think all of the ladies that are listening, I think y'all should pay close attention to this. Because I've heard some of my, you know, my women friends say, Oh, I need a man who's obsessed about me. Ooh, and if he's not no. obsessed about me, it's not no. real. And I'm Ladies, like, no. who have you talked to? You no. have not like bounced this off of like men to get you like- You want a man that does not care about you. Boom. That is what every woman should be aspiring Desire. For. A man who does not care about you. A woman who has a man who's obsessed with her, that is a problem. That's a crime. It's crazy. Go on Netflix. Go all to the of, category murder documentary. All of them. Watch any of them. He was obsessed. He was, he was obsessed. obsessed. He was obsessed. He was obsessed. Men don't obsess good. Mm -mm. They don't obsess good. There's no middle ground. There's no, yeah. It's you, extremes. It's polarized. You, you don't want that. No, you this really is, don't. It's not good. If your man's obsessed with you, seek help. He's crazy. Like, if you just realize, if you're listening to this and you realize, I think my man's obsessed with me, it might be too late for you. And the the, the messed up part is you you wanted that. Like, that's the thing. That, like, I, I need a man. I think you need to, like, take some time off. Maybe go chase the rains in Africa. Do something that, like, go, what is it? Hear, love, pray, eat, love, pray. One of those things. Eat, you love, need to go pray. One of those journeys. Got groove back. Yeah, you got to fall in love back with yourself because you can't be saying, like, you want somebody that's obsessed with you. You think it's good, but then, like, you turn into one of them Netflix shows. A man obsessed is no good. It's not. It's no good. Adulthood pro tip. Marty, you ever been with an obsessed man? Mm -hmm. It's no good. It's no good. How bad was he on one to ten? Weird. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Weird I is like, different though. Like, not not terrible. I feel like four. Oh, five. that's just an average guy. That's just normal. No, I don't. Okay, sure. Four or five. I don't, that's a, I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah, I yeah. mean. I think anything of above seven is. Uh, have you ever been with an obsessive woman? No, I have not. But mm. I think I'm a great judge of character. Okay. I think I'm a great judge of character, and usually women show signs of that very, very early, early on. on. What is the sign of that? You constant like. First of all, like I tell, I tell, like if I'm dating someone, I'll tell you like immediately. Like if you, I don't like it when you when you blow up my phone, right? Like I don't like it when you call me like a bunch of times because I have, I'll get anxiety and 
I'll think something happened to you, right? So if I'm if I'm doing a podcast and I have 10 missed calls or 20 missed calls from you, I'm going to think something happened to you. And I might get up and run and be like, hey, what, what happened? Is everything okay? And then you tell me, oh, I was just wondering what you were doing. So I kind of let them know that immediately. Like, hey, you don't do waste that. this. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm busy. I do podcasts. I'm doing interviews. I'm writing. There's times I'm away from my phone. If it's not an emergency, just call me or text me. And then when I get back, I'll, I'll. I'll hit you back. Like, but you bring up a good point too, where it's like you need to have somebody that matches, you know, not necessarily you, but like almost like your lifestyle where they have things to do. You don't want somebody who just has a bunch of free time because That's you're because you gotta fill up that time. And, but and you're on the opposite side of the spectrum where yeah. you don't really have a bunch of free time. So that's just in itself gonna conflict. Yeah. Um, I think I think for me early on, like that's like the first sign. Like mm. early on, one time I remember one time in my back in my like twenties or whatever. I, I forgot exactly when. Like I was I was I was on a date with a girl. It was like probably like the first date or maybe the second date. And like I was I got my I was on my phone and I was like uh, like texting like I don't know who but whatever. So I got a text message and I'm texting and 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 she's like she's like looking at my phone. She's like who we texting like who we, and mm. I kind of like I I was like I get that it's like a joke that she's kind of joking, but she was really kind of like who we texting like trying to see like, and I was just like all no. right, this is like a little yeah. bit of kind of a red flag. Yeah, you might be might be a little crazy, but yeah. look, I know look, and I know there's people listening to this, both men and women who are like, well, I like my partner crazy, a little crazy. And to those yeah. people, I'll say I'll see you on Netflix in a couple of years. Oh, well, good luck. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. I'll watch. You know what? They need to be listening. They're gonna be listening to us in the future, saying that I should listen. Yeah, when the docu series comes out, I'll yeah. watch. Yeah, I should have paid attention to this. And I'll be like, yep, yeah, they should have listened to the pod. Yeah, you know. We'll be probably, and they'll be interviewing journey. your friends, and your friends will be like, I mean, she listened to the adulthood podcast. But I don't she know how she could let this happen. And she like, didn't oh, listen, girl. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Again, covered a lot of things. Covered a lot of things on this podcast. Travel etiquette. We touch on proposals again. Vacation etiquette. Uh, we do this for the people, you know. Strictly, we like to give back. We like to. God gave us a gift. A gift of. The way we see the world, honestly, and, perspective, and people have uh people have thanked us because I feel like a lot of the stuff, a couple people have hit me up saying that they've been in certain situations where they wondered what would the what would the adulterers mm, do, you know. Mm, mm. Um, we'll touch on that on the next episode. Uh, again, if you had a good time listening to this episode, do not forget to like it. Give us five stars on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your podcast. Give us five stars. If you like it on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you're watching this right now on YouTube, comment, comment, whatever comment you have in the comments. Yep. Help us grow uh, the algorithm. Yep. The podcast is growing and we thank you guys for helping us grow. Yep. And I feel like we have like a good base right now. Yeah. And I feel like when, when the podcast explodes, I feel it will. like we have a good base of people now that could be like, I was there from, from the day one and I helped it, uh, and I helped it grow. And here's the thing, you know, the writers is on strike. The actors is on strike. You know, it's no NFL and uh, NBA, you know, MLB is kind of like slow. It ain't really too much for you to do. You yeah. don't watch everything on all of the streamings and everything like that. This is pure off the top. This yeah. is told content. Every Monday, baby. And you know it. The Adulthood Podcast. I'm actually in New York for the rest of August. So if you're in New York City this weekend, I'm at the Stan Comedy Club on Friday and Saturday, eight o'clock show and 10 o'clock show. You can come check me out. Um, I'll be doing spots in New York all month. And then next month in September, going back on the road, baby. We got Chicago. We got uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. We got Seattle. We got Vegas. We got San Diego. We got Boston. Check on IanLaraLive.com. Uh, I'm going on the road for the rest of the year and then I'm going to, my plan is to tour again for next year and hopefully tape another special by the end of next year. So we're, we're getting after it. You got Absolutely. anything? I will be actually at Panda on Friday the 18th. Come out, pull up, you know, come eat some good food and hear some good music. You know what I mean? I got some private events and then it's starting to pick back up. You know, New York City, this is when we start to shine. Uh, big shout out to everybody that's been listening, everybody that's been hitting us up again. You know, we always want to make sure that we take care of the people, you know, make sure you hit and subscribe the like button. Um, and yeah, big shout out to everybody that's been sending messages. It's always like, oh, what are these two going to say? The nonsense. But then you keep tuning I in. I love people that send the messages. Again, if you see us, if you want to hit us up, hit us up. We love to see it. And we, we it, it actually makes us feel like we're, we're a community and it's dope as hell. Yeah. I'm DJ APM. This is I'm me and Lara. Lara. Later, y'all.